Hello and welcome to this video. This is going to be a three-step tutorial uh, on threading, on JavaFX, and lastly on unit testing. Uh, in this example I'm going to go through how threading works uh, in Java as well as how we can use it to optimize stuff and what we should look out for. In this case we'll see how race condition works. So let's get started. Um, the first of all is that I've just created a simple JavaFX application um, from the from Maven. If you're not sure how to do this, I have another video on it um, that you can find on my profile. Anyway, first of all, I'm going to create a new class in here, and we're just going to call that counter, like so. And then we want to think about, well, what does a counter do? Well, it should count, obviously, but we need an hour bound. And I'm just going to create an attribute and call that one max and an integer should be fine yeah just like that and it'll default to zero um yeah that's fine what i do want to do though is i'm going to set it to 200,000. so we'll count to 200,000. and notice that i'm using this underscore uh kenny is a friend of mine that taught me that you can actually use this in java uh, and it'll still be interpreted as 200,000. this is just more pleasing to the eyes when you're coding and that you know you can more easily see that this is 200,000. um or this is actually so that's really nice anyways we specified the upper bound for us for our counter the next step is to you know count it so how do we do that well we need an increment method i'm just going to create a void and call it increment but what are we going to increment well we also need a value attribute to continue and i'm just going to call that value and this will default to zero as well so we don't need to do anything here the increment value should, well, should not call itself, it should instead increment the value once, like so. So if we go ahead and make a main method here, we should be able to run this application. I'm going to create a new counter, counter, and just like that we have an instance. Um, let's just create a getter for this real quick. I'm going to jump into IntelliJ, I'm just going to select the value and we'll have a getter for that increment this once and when I is out the counters value this should of course be one but let's see if that's working great so the logic we want to do is want to say until we reach let's just do that in the increment method want to say for I and I is zero as long as i is less than our max value, we want to increment it. Which means in this case, we'll call the value plus plus 200,000 times. So when we run this again now, this down here should say 200,000. And there we go. Isn't that just beautiful? <laughs> so behind the scenes, this is of course taking some time, uh, but we can definitely optimize on this using well, you guessed it, threading. So let's do that. First of all, I'm going to specify how, my, how many threads we want to use for this. So up here, let's create a, an integer and call it thread limit. And we'll just say, if, well, four is a good number. Perfect. So what are we going to do in here? Well, first of all, we want to create a list for our threads. And that may not make perfect sense right now, but I'll show you in a second why that's actually a really good idea. Like so. And we of course need to implement the Java Collections Framework for us to do that. Alright, so we're going to create a new for loop right here. And in this one, we're going to go through the threads and then start them individually. So first of all, let's say for and as well again, equals zero. As long as i is less than our thread limit, we want to increment i again. And in here we'll just simply say thread, thread equals new, thread, like so. Okay, so the thread has, um, it takes a runnable instance of an implementation, I should say, as it's uh, as a constructor method. So we'll just say new runnable, and this right here says that you can inline a class right here instead of having to create it somewhere else. So just like that, we have an inline class where we can run this code. So this code should then increment our 
you know, our value instead of it doing it down here. So we can take this and we can move it right up there. Um, which is pretty cool. Um, you know what, let's just see what happens when I do this now. Zero. Yeah, and that makes sense because we didn't actually run it perfect. <laughs> Alright, so at this point, the next thing we want to do is that we want to add this to our thread list. So what is going to happen here? Well, we call increment, and maybe we should rename this to start incrementing, just to make it more apparent what we're trying to do. So we run this start incrementing method. It'll create a list that contains the threads we're trying to create. In this case, we can only have four threads. We'll create a vulnerable instance where we go through the max, increment it, when we run it, and then yeah, and then add the thread to this list. So right now it haven't run, but that's what we're gonna do next. So we're gonna say for th thread thread. This is just gonna go through the threads, and then we wanna sorry about that. We wanna start them individually. Okay, so what do you think is gonna happen now? Pause the video for a second and think. All right, so I'm gonna run this now and let's have a look. So this is of course a really small number compared to the 200,000. So what exactly is happening here? Because believe it or not, this has nothing to do with race conditions. The thing is we start incrementing and before the, the program gets to this line, it's only counted to 1,621. And we can do this over and over again. So you can see at this point it not only got to 172. Uh, so this is basically just because it, you know, it only got this far before it reached the next line. And then it will continue in the background, so that's a bit problematic. Alright, so the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we don't print the value before all the threads are done um, counting. So what we can do there is use the join method that are than the threads. We'll say thread, thread, and we're just going to go f through them. And we'll say thread join. This is going to cause an exception, or it can cause an exception, so we'll have to surround with a try catch like that. And let's try again. Let's see what happens. There we go. So, this is, believe it or not, this is looking a bit better. We are getting over the 200,000 limit. But the thing is, right now they're all trying to count to 200,000. So, let's fix that real quick. So what we want to do here instead is we want to say max divided by the thread limit. So now they're each counting one fourth of the 200,000, which means each thread should, in theory, count to 50,000. Uh, 50, Let's run it again. And we're nowhere near. So this is a problem of race conditions. So what exactly is happening in this case? Well, we start incrementing. And these four threads, they're all fighting to access the current value and increment it and so on. So let me just, you know, let's just comment it out and see what happens. So in this case, thread one accesses the value and it gets 18 back. That's fine. At the same time, thread two accesses the value and it also gets 18 back. At this point, thread one increments the value to 19. And while that is happening, thread two increments the value to 19 as well. And then they both write that back. And just like that, we've lost one. We won lost one number. And in this case, we have four threads running and this is happening all of the time. So this is a typical problem you'll see with race conditions because they're all racing towards this resource value we see up here. So what can we do to mitigate this? Well, luckily we have something called Lux. So what we can do here is that up in the top of our class, I'll create a private attribute and use the lock. We'll just call it lock and we'll just create a new instance right here. We'll use the re-entry lock like that. And then down here in where we're accessing the value, we'll say lock dot sorry lock dot lock 
And then when we're done with the value, we want to say lock dot unlock. Let's run it again. And now we reach 200,000. This is of course, this well, this can be very powerful, but it's a bit overkill for what we're trying to do. So we're going to roll things back a little bit. I'm going to create a private method that increments the value by one again. So we're going to move this down here. Actually, let's just move everything. And it should still be working. Oh yeah, well, we of course need to also use, you know, use the method. Good job. <laughs> Anyway, let's run this again, see if everything is working. It is, we get to 200,000. Great. All right, so instead of using the locks right here, we can instead tell the increment method that it needs to be synchronized. And this will essentially do the same. It just adds some more, you know, abilities you can use later on, like the notify. But I'm not going to get into that in this video. So right now we're counting. We're not seeing any race conditions and it's basically working. What we can do is we can create a new constructor to just, you know, increment this max. So we'll create one where we can say that the max can be 300,000 or, you know, 500,000. Like so. And it's still working. Great. And that's it.